Want to know what you should be doing before starting every single video edit from now on? Then stick around. Nick here from NK Courses, where we help you to propel your video freelancing career with our online courses and digital tools. So picture this scene. You just found your dream editing job. You hit apply, you get the gig, the client loves you, you make a coffee, sit down at your desk, click download, and boom. All of the assets look like a teenager's bedroom. No doubt you want to dive into the creative fun stuff and start adding in lens flares, but starting here will only make it more of a headache down the line. And believe me, when I started out, I used to just import this mess into my editing software and start cutting, which was always a huge mistake. We have a way to avoid all of this with our tool, Project Jumpstart. You'll have a folder structure that's used in all the big post-production houses. Project templates for Adobe Premiere, After Effects, and Final Cut Pro. And the best part is what I'm about to share with you works with almost every professional video editing software because Hollywood still uses Windows Movie Maker, right? Let's get started. Starting with the top level of the folder, you just pop in the client's name, title of the project, and the job number if you have one. A lot of larger studios that have hundreds of projects a year usually put a job number, which is what you put in your invoice as well. This is so that you can have a system to keep track of which project is which, especially if you work with the same client on various projects. Inside here, you'll find your assets folder and then documents, which include your brand guidelines, your brief, contract for the job, your invoice, storyboard, and spec sheet if there's certain specifications you need for the delivery. Going back a folder, we have any specific fonts you may have used or any audio, still, or video references related to the project. Next are guides to help you frame up your content and repurpose it for other platforms such as square 1x1 one one Instagram feeds, 9x16 Instagram stories, 4x5 Facebook feeds, 16x9 for YouTube, and even 1911 for that super anamorphic cinema release. You also have handy Instagram story overlays to see it in situ with your designs and avoid anything that's in frame that obscures the UI. There's also an XML and EDL folder which are small edit instructions that you may be sent to import the edit into your timeline. We'll come back to projects for the demo and take a look at media. This is organized into proxies, which are compressed files that are ideal if you don't have a powerful machine to play back the original files or you have limited space on your hard drive. You have your raw files, which you can categorize by the camera type if it's a DSLR, drone, iPhone, etc. You then have stock footage, which is broken into comp shots, which are temporarily unlicensed or watermarked footage that you'll replace with purchased ones once they've been signed off. Under audio, we have camera audio, sound effects, soundtrack, and the voiceover. Of course, you can create more folders here, like for a shotgun, lapel, or wireless mic that you want to separate out, each with a folder of the talent's name to easily find their audio later. Next are stills with JPEG or raw files, which go here. In design, you typically add any Adobe Illustrator, Photoshop, or InDesign files. With exports, if you're like me, you'll like to render out of software like After Effects to then bring into DaVinci Resolve. So here you have a very simple folder from AE, which you can organize under 2D animation, 3D animation, backgrounds, lower thirds, titles, and VFX. You also have 2AE, which is anything going into After Effects, and WIPS, which stands for Work in Progress, which are your own personal exports to use for your breakdown reels or social posts. Lastly, deliverables. This is broken into firstly the client review, which is where you can store version one, two, three, to however many versions it takes to make your client smile. Do that, just pick one. Once you have your work signed off, you can then export it into client deliverables, which is a great way to keep track of each master file for you and your client. So whether it's for broadcast, Facebook, Instagram, Vimeo, or YouTube, you can pop them here. And they're all color coded to have the same visual link between the folders and labels inside of Premiere and After Effects. So let's do a demo of how this works in the real world. Starting with Premiere, you'd name your project in a similar format to client, date, and the version. Once you open the project, you'll see those identical folders inside of Premiere. For a simple project, you can just drag and drop in individual files into the corresponding folders in Premiere. But what if you have all of your beautifully organized files ready? Well, I tend to delete everything from folders one to six in Premiere, and then drag those same folders in from Finder, and you're ready to start cutting. You'll also notice there's a few additions here in the project. 
There's a sequence folder, which has several popular templates that you can kick off with. There's everything from Facebook, Instagram, HD, 2K, 4K, all the way up to 5K. So there's no need to fumble around with new project settings in Premiere every time. Instead, you can just use these common presets. There's also an After Effects Compositions folder, which is where I tend to store all of my dynamic links. Now let's jump into After Effects. My favorite time-saving trick here is that you can have this same folder structure show up as a default from now on. To set this up, head to After Effects, Preferences, New Project, and select New Project Loads Template. Select our AE project, and now when you open a new project, it loads all of the folders and assets by default. Like in Premiere, which had templates for sequences, you have templates for your compositions. And lastly, we have the Final Cut Pro library, which has the familiar project templates all set up with various ratios and frame rates, as well as some very handy smart collections to place anything that is a multicam, synchronized clip, favorited or a rejected clip. There are even auditions, compound clips or layered graphics that sort themselves out into these folders automatically. You can duplicate any of these smart collections then double click to change the parameters as you like. So say for example, you want to filter by any compound clip that is also favorited. It's a really dynamic way to find the exact clips you're looking for. So the next time the director's asking you to find that favorited section from a drone shot that goes over the Gleftikol waters on a Greek island, you'll know exactly where that is. I can feel the power. <laughs> yes. And trust me, there will be a day where a client will come back to you and want to re-edit on a project that you archived years ago, and you'll need to dip back in and make those changes. The brilliant thing with all of this is that whenever it comes to sharing your editing project with, say, a colorist, you can easily include all of those assets, fonts, brand guidelines, and media in one neat little package. So that's an overview of how to use Project Jumpstart to increase your productivity and focus on being creative. There's another tool that I use that pairs perfectly with this, like a quality cheese and a fine wine that I use on every project. If you want to find out what this hack is, you'll want to check out the next video coming up after this. And if you found this helpful, you may also want to check out our freelancer toolkit. We have tools that automate freelancing tasks like pricing your clients with a quote generator, making sure you run in a profitable business with Finance Manager Pro, managing all of your clients in one simple place with the client tracker, automatically briefing your clients with a brief generator, and many more. And best of all, it includes Project Jumpstart with free updates for life. Link to the Freelancer Toolkit in the description below. Did you find these tips helpful? Hell yes. Let me know in the comments below if you'll be using this for your project from now on. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.